the church. Everybody ready for a new year? <laughs> you better get ready because it's coming and it's going to be here quick. <laughs> I, it, last year went by so quick I forgot what I did yesterday. <laughs> but it's going to be good. God's been good to us this year and I'm looking forward to him being good to us next year. You know, we have a God that cares. We have a pastor that cares. We have a church that cares about its community and its family. Amen. Can't beat that. We've got three of the best things going. And your salvation is the best thing going. If you're here this morning and don't know Christ, don't leave without him. Amen. He's the most important thing you'll have this next year is to have Jesus in your life. Because we never know when we walk out the door if we get to come back or not. And so uh, Christ is very important. And uh, the pastor's gone so we can do whatever we want to this morning. So <laughs> he, you know, he, he really didn't leave any instructions. So if anybody got anything they want to do or sing or whatever, and just uh, we just have a good time. But there's a few announcements this morning. Uh, there won't be a service tonight because Brother David is... Uh, uh, I hope he got his daughter married off, uh, I guess, yesterday. And uh, they have a good time and take a, relax a little bit. But uh, we will, uh, there won't be any service tonight, and they will be Wednesday night, but no supper. So eat before you come, because there ain't going to be no food here Wednesday <laughs> night. The lady said they're going to take another week off, which they only, you know, take a couple of Wednesdays off during the holidays, and they deserve it. They work too hard. But uh, we certainly enjoy their food, so we won't argue with that. Uh, so there's a, I think that's a, and, and our, our Light of Moon Christmas offering went over our 2,000 goals, so that was a great thing. And uh, just want, uh, if you haven't picked up your Christmas cards, uh, get them this morning before you leave. And uh, there's just a few things that uh, I don't know of anything else that we really uh, need to talk about so we're just uh, brother kelly is going to sing to us in a little bit and uh, i've known this man and heard him sing for a long time and i'm uh, you're in for a treat i enjoy him and uh, he's, he's going to do a good job for us this morning he loved the lord and we love them and uh, we've known him for quite a while and uh, just it's been a joy to to have them listen to them sing over the years and it's been a few years hasn't it kelly <laughs> But uh, they've had some good scenes around the, around our association. And uh, so if that's it, well, Brother Fred are going to say the morning prayer, and then we'll just let Belinda get busy. Thank you, Brother Phil. Let's all bow our heads as we uh, bring our uh, prayers uh, to our Lord Jesus, our Lord Father. Lord Father, Abba Father, as we here at First Baptist of Floral City look back over the year 2017, we take note of the many joys, pleasures, and blessings you have graced us with. As your family, we know your guiding light, our Savior Jesus, is for us to continue to be our guiding light. As the past year had many good times, yet there were not so good times of sadness, disappointments, and even deep griefs of personal loss. Still, you were and are here consoling us, encouraging us, and guiding us. Looking ahead into 2018, <clears throat> as our late brother in Christ, President Ronald Reagan said, we do not know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. You, the great I am. We fully and continuously trust you, Lord, to forever sustain us, guide us, encourage us, edify us, and bless us who believe, come to faith, and grow in our trust in you. Thank you, Lord God. May the name of Jesus, the name above all names, be lifted up and glorified now in 2018 and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay, if you would, please stand. We're going to sing Victory in Jesus.
next? You want me to do it? <laughs> okay, I'll do it. <laughs> this is what happens. Okay, so I just want to welcome then everyone here to First Baptist of Floral City. And it's at this time that we let you all get a chance to say hi to each one another. And so while um, we have Dan and everybody playing, we'll give you just a chance to make sure you, you at least shake hands or give somebody a hug with about six people that you don't know. So let's go ahead and And he's going to be singing about three songs, and uh, we just want to welcome him and his wife, Faye. Uh, I told Pastor that we were going to have the Gulf Ridge Quartet here with us today, and uh, I talked with Kelly, and I thought we were talking about the Gulf Ridge Quartet, and we were talking about Kelly, and so he showed up. They didn't. Uh, they weren't invited. <laughs> so anyway, this is a, a typical New Year's Eve if anything can go different or wrong, it will. So I want you to welcome Kelly. He's, he's one of the finest singers that I know. And uh, he's going to bless your heart just like he's been blessing mine for years. Kelly? Praise the Lord. Isn't it great being saved? It's a beautiful life, isn't it? One of my favorite songs, been around about 50 years, I guess, probably. So hope you enjoy it. When I made my star for heaven I could only find one way Road that led me through the mountains And the valleys a road Not many folks would take Since I started traveling on my journey I've covered many, many miles behind me Miles of sun and rain Miles of smiles and pain The road's been rough, but I again would choose the same Up ahead, I see a sign 
and it points me straight ahead to victory. I know I must be traveling right, for I remember passing cows. burns from the sweat and the heat my strength's completely drained till my face marks the pain my back is bent from the strain and I could turn around for the old road But every mountain that I climb, I again, I'd have to bear. So I really can't turn back. Some may be using my tracks. I see one more bend. This just might be my rose. Some this rose already turned to go. I like that song. The greatest decision you'll ever make in your life is accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And I tell you what, because you become a Christian does not mean that this life's going to be a bed of roses. We're going to have our ups and downs and our mountains and the valleys. But I tell you what, through this life, being a Christian and patterning your life around serving Jesus Christ and putting him first in your life, don't give him the crumbs, give him the first part of your life. Then you can enjoy the journey. Enjoyed the glad days, I've made it through the sad days. For oh, my Lord has walked each step with me. I've enjoyed the living, the receiving, and the giving. I've enjoyed the journey, and I can't wait till I get home. I don't get the wrong impression. There's joy in walking this heavenly way. Oh, it's good right now, the best is yet to come When we get to the end of the way Well, I've enjoyed the glad days, I've made it through the sad days For oh, my Lord has walked each step with me I've enjoyed the living, receiving and the giving I've enjoyed the journey, but I can't wait till I get home 
Then all the counts will then be settled And those mysteries will then be made known And the questions that we had no answer for Will be answered when we get home Yeah, I've enjoyed glad days I've made it through the sad days For my Lord has walked each step with me I've enjoyed the living Receiving and the giving I've enjoyed the journey But I can't wait till I get home Yeah, I've enjoyed the glad days I've made it through the sad days For oh, my Lord has walked each step with me I've enjoyed the living Receiving and the giving I've enjoyed the journey But I can't wait till I Get home. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful day, and we all get home together. Amen. Yeah, I apologize for the mix-up. We've done quite a bit of singing for Bob over the years, and whenever he said, would you like to come sing a couple of songs? I said, well, sure. He said, the quartet's not doing anything, so I'd be glad to come. So, so when we're one part of the Gulf Ridge Quartet, and I always enjoy having a place to come sing, and I'd appreciate it, Bob. This is one of my favorite songs. I know my wife's favorite song, entitled Sweet Morning Song. Your presence, dear Lord, is all that I need to follow your footsteps wherever they lead. Day after day, my soul longs to be led by your spirit and caught up in thee. You are my joy, my sweet morning song. Jesus, my Lord, to you I belong. Of all pages, my sweet hiding place. With mercy and grace, heart faithful and true, morning by my strength is renewed to songs of praise so sweet I will sing to Jesus my dear Savior my Lord and my You are my joy, my sweet morning song, Jesus, my Lord, to you I belong, the fountain of life flowing. The rock of all pages, my sweet hiding place. The rock of all ages, my sweet hiding place. Again, it great being saved. It's a beautiful life, hey.
Let us pray. Dear God, we want to thank you for this day and all the blessings that have already bestowed upon us. We want to thank you for the beautiful weather. We want to thank you for all these beautiful people that have come here today to worship. We appreciate it that we could come here to worship in, in freedom without being people guarding us and telling us that we can't worship. We, we appreciate the freedom that we have to worship. We also ask you, dear God, to bless this offering. Bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, good morning. You know, God is so good to us. I'll tell you what, I could offer a benediction and, uh, and we could go home. We've already been blessed. Kelly, thank you so much for the, the music that you've brought to us. Uh, it's always good when, uh, when you can have a well-rounded uh, service. Uh, hopefully I can help you a little bit with that this morning. Uh, as I get older, the, the more opportunities, or the only opportunities that I get really to preach is at funerals. <laughs> and uh, it's a real treat to be able to preach at a regular service. But, you know, I have a, a poem that uh, I've read at a, a number of funerals, but I want to read it to you because it says something about this time of year and about you and about me. So listen, if you would. The name of it is called The Dash. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of his friend. He referred to the dates on her tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noticed at first the date of her birth and spoke was second with tears. But what mattered most was the dash between those years. For the dash represents all the time that she spent alive on earth, and now only those who loved her know what that little dash is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about it long and hard. Are, these things, are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left you could be at dash mid-range. If you could just slow down enough to consider what's true and what's real and always try to understand the way other people feel and <clears throat> be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this little dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be pleased with the things they have said about how you spent your dash? I think that, uh, that that's a, a really good poem to start a message with this morning. Because 
I think back at my life and there's some things that I'd like to change, but I can't. But there's some things that I can do better that's coming along here in the future. So the dash has meant a lot to me. Uh, <clears throat> let me tell you a little story, if I could, about a fellow that died, since we're talking about funerals, about a fellow that died and he went to heaven. And he met uh, St. Peter up at the pearly gate. St. Peter told him uh, he was welcome. Come on in. He said, let me show you around. And so they started walking down the golden streets and uh, they went first this building and that. And they were just all beautiful. They were well decorated. Everything was just exactly like it ought to be. Never seen a place so beautiful. And then they came to this one building great big doors on the front of it, a beautiful building, probably the most beautiful building that they'd seen so far. And St. Peter walked right past it. And the fella kept looking back at the, at the building. And so finally his curiosity got the best of him and he finally said to St. Peter, he says, St. Peter, he says, you've shown me all these beautiful buildings and all the beautiful places and, and we walked right past that that one building back there, what, what, is, what is that building? And St. Peter said, well, I wasn't going to show that one to you, but since you've asked, uh, let's, let's go back to it. So they did. They walked back to the building, and St. Peter went over, and he opened up the two great big huge doors on cantilevers. They were so big and so heavy, but they were big. It, doors like royalty comes walking into and the building was all packed with gifts, gift wraps, and uh, with the, all the, all, everything in it was gift wrapped, all the little packages and, and things, and beautiful bows on them and what have you. And the man said to St. Peter, he says, I, I don't understand. And so St. Peter told him, he says, uh, these are all the gifts that God had for you that you didn't ask for. Well, you know, we do need to ask for things and God will give us the things of our, the, the desires of our hearts as long as it's within his will. That's kind of a tail end thing that you need to think about as long as it is within his will. But uh, you know there are some things that, uh, that we ask for that are pretty selfish and God even gives us some of those. So I'm thankful for all of that. I, my God is so good, and He's blessed me in so many ways, and I know that He's blessed you. I'm blessed just to see that this building is full today. This is really neat. Do you know this is New Year's Eve? You're not supposed to be here. <laughs> uh, oh, there was a fellow. Uh, there, there was a fellow that the preacher one day said, uh, "I'm going to go visit this guy. Uh, he's getting along in his years," and. Uh, I, I need to go visit him and talk to him a little about the hereafter. So he knocked on the guy's door, and the guy came to his, to his front door and invited the preacher in. They went in to sit down in the living room on the couch, and the uh, preacher said to the man, he says, well, he says, you know, he says, you're getting along pretty good in your years, and he says, it's time I talk to you a little about the hereafter. And the man says, well, preacher, he says, I know all about that. The preacher says, you do? He says, yes. He says, yeah. He says, I go into the kitchen and I open up one of the drawers and I ask myself, what am I here after? <laughs> I go in the bathroom and I open up the medicine cabinet. I ask myself, what am I here after? Well, the hereafter is important. It really is. And you need to think some about the hereafter in your life. Uh, some of these stories are cute and some of them are funny and some of them are entertainment, entertaining, but I'd like to get down and be serious with you. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about, about you and your salvation. If you were to die today and stand before God and he was to ask you, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? You know, that's a soul searching question. And with God asking the question, you've got to wonder, what would I say? Well, there's only one answer that God's looking for. There's only one answer that would get you into heaven. 
And I want to talk to you a little about some scripture uh, that helps you to understand what your salvation is all about. Uh, in uh, Matthew 28, 19, and 20, it tells us to go and share Jesus with everyone and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. He says, Lo, I'll be with you always. Uh, that means up into eternity. But how, how am I going to get into eternity? Well, let me see if I can't help you with that. Uh, in the Bible, in Romans 3.10, it says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Not one of us is good enough to get into heaven. Now that's a kind of a, a, a good place to start because that's probably where we all started. Not probably, it is where we all started. None of us have been 100% right 100% of the time. And so anyway, uh, uh, it goes on. In Romans 3.23, it says, as it is written, uh, uh, doesn't either. In Romans 3.23, it says, for all has sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's not many of us. That's not most of us. That's every one of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and that's pretty sad. But you know what? When sin offered its opportunity for me to do it, that's what I did. I grabbed a hold of it, and sure enough, I did. And do you know how many sins it takes to keep you from getting into heaven? Only one. Then it goes on to say in, in Romans 6, 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Uh, you know what? If I go out and I work all week long, and on Friday evening when I finish work and the people I'm working for hand me an envelope with some money into it, that's what I get for what I've done all week long. Well, what you get for sin is death. And anywhere in the Bible that it says death, that means hell. Anywhere in the Bible it says life, that's heaven. Well, we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That means that, uh, that we've got a problem, a sin problem. It says, uh, <clears throat> but God, in Romans 5, 8, it says, but God demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, Jesus was here 2,000 years ago. He walked the face of the earth as a man walks the face of the earth. He was every bit man and he was every bit God. He told us how we should live our lives. He showed us the ways we should go and the things that we should do. He didn't just put it up on a placard someplace and say you can read this if you want to. Uh, it's uh, like the Great Commission uh, you know, it's, he told us to do it, and we need to do it. It's not an option. And getting into heaven, you know, Je Jesus demonstrated his love toward us, and he said, this is the way you ought to live, and this will get you into heaven, and the things you ought to do and the things you ought to say. Then in John 3.36, it says, He who believeth in the Son hath life. But he who believeth not in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth upon him. You know, uh, you can say, yes, I believe in God, and, uh, and I have life. But you know who else believes in God? Satan, that's right. Satan really knows what God's all about. Uh, and uh, he's not altogether happy about it. He's been fighting God ever since he threw him out of heaven. Well, uh, if, uh, if, if that's true, then we may have a problem too. It says uh, that in John 3, 36, He who believeth in the Son hath life, and he who believeth not in the Son shall not have life, but the wrath of God abideth upon him. And you know what the wrath of God is? That's hell. Plain and simple. Hell's not a dirty word. It's a bad place. 
And I don't look forward to going there. As a matter of fact, I'm not planning on going there at all. Uh, I've, I've made some arrangements to where I'm not going. And I hope you have too. And in John 3, 16, that's the Bible in a nutshell. You can say anything you want to about the Bible, but it's all wrapped around John 3, 16. You want to say it with me? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth upon him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's what the Bible says. Wow, believe on Jesus, and you can have everlasting life. And then in Romans 10, 9 and 10, it, it's, it's, those are two pretty good verses. They tell us how to go about doing it. And so, uh, if I could, let me... See if I can't thumb through here and find that. I usually get some words mixed up when I try to recite these verses. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes under, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You know, I was sharing Jesus with a, a fellow that come to talk to me about, uh, uh, about uh, uh, what we were going to do with our earthly things when we, when we depart the earth. Uh, and uh, it was uh, about our trust account that we have, uh, we've set up. And after we finished talking about the trust account, he and I walked out. If, when you leave my house, you, uh, if you're a friend, you go through the garage and then you go on out to your car. If you're not, you get to go out the front door. Well, uh, he'd, he'd endeared himself to me pretty good, and so we walked out to the garage, and so I asked him that same question that I started off the message with this evening. If you were to die and stand before God, and he was to ask you, why should I let you into my heaven, what would you say? And he says, you know, he said, that's probably the best question I've heard all day long. And he says, and uh, he says, I honestly don't know. And I asked him, I said, well, would you let me tell you what the Bible has to say about it? And I shared these verses with him. And when we got down here to the Romans 10, 9 and 10, I asked him, I said, would you like to do that? Here's the instructions. It's right here in the basic training manual, the Bible. You know what the, the acrostic for Bible is? B-I-B-L-E. Basic instruction before leaving earth. That's what the Bible is all about. This is the instruction on how to be saved. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, that's your mouth, not mine. And you can do that in a real simple prayer like, Dear God, I confess to you that I'm a sinner. And, and I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And, and I want to be saved. Well, that's a pretty simple prayer. But let's go on just a little bit further. I believe, Father, that you raised Jesus from the dead. And he came after three days, came back to life, and was seen by over 500 people. And they witnessed and swore to the fact that it was, in fact, Jesus Christ that had been crucified and I believe this into my heart and would you come into my heart and save me that's all there is to being saved pray a prayer similar to that there's no magic words but pray through those two verses and you you can ensure if you really and truly believe it with your heart and you really and truly have confessed it with your mouth then you'll be saved and you're going to go to heaven You'll be able to walk those streets of gold, see all those beautiful jewels that God has decorated heaven with. Oh, there's so much that's said about heaven, but there's so little that we know. But it doesn't stop there. And uh, over in Matthew, it says that uh, if you confess me before man, I'll confess you before my Father who is in heaven. But if you deny me before man, I'll deny you before my Father who is in heaven. Well, 
Now, there's a number of ways that you confess, you can confess Jesus before man. One of those ways is during an invitation at a church service. Uh, when the pastor offers a, an invitation for you to come and receive Jesus, you can walk down the aisle and tell him, I've asked Jesus to come into my heart, and, uh, and I want to just confess him. I want to make a public profession of my faith. Or, on the other hand, you could go down to uh, Brooksville or up to Inverness to the busiest corner in town, and you could in a loud voice holler, I've just received Jesus into my heart, and I want you all to know it. Amen. Well, I can tell you what they'd do if you did that. <laughs> There'd be a, a fun time in the old corral today. Yeah, they'd be making fun of you. But here at church, instead of making fun of you, folks are going to pray for you. Now, I don't know what your spiritual condition is, uh, but I do know that if you confess Jesus before man, he's going to confess you before my Father who is in heaven. And that's a really neat thing. I'm looking forward to that. When, he asked, when God asked me, why should I let you into my heaven? I've got the answer. I found it right here in the book and in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's just so simple and so easy. doesn't cost you a thing. But it's one of the hardest things for a person to do. And I'd like to give you all the opportunity to do that. I don't know your spiritual condition, but you do. Do you know for sure that you'd get it, you'd go into heaven when you die? Or are you wondering, am I going to heaven? Or will I have to spend eternity in hell? Because that's the only two places. And you're going to be one place or the other. If you have some doubt in your mind about where you're going and you'd like to come talk to me about it, I'll be right down here in front for a few minutes during an invitation. Come on down the aisle. If you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, come down here and let me talk to you a little bit about it. And we'll get you saved. We'll get you up here in the baptismal. You know what? That's one of the neatest ways to start off a service, to be baptized. That's the first act of obedience. You know, what do I do after I get saved? Well, let's see. You go to your bank and you take out all your money and you bring it and give it to God. <laughs> no. First act of obedience. I want to be baptized. Yeah. The first thing he asks you to do. Some of you may be here that have asked Jesus to come into your heart gone so far as to make a public profession of faith but never been baptized we'll do that for you not today but we'll set up an appointment for you all you've got to do is ask like one of those gifts that was there in the building that the man saw it was one of those gifts that God wants to give you it's a it's a good experience to know that you're doing what God has asked you to do uh, Belinda come on we're going to have a time of invitation let me pray for you uh, just now and I'll be up front if you've got a decision that you'd like to make or you've got a decision that you feel like you have to make you come on down and uh, and we'll deal with it and let's pray together for just a minute father we're so thankful for your love and for your blessing we're thankful for all the good things you continually do for us I pray father that in this special time of uh, of invitation that if if the Holy Spirit has tickled someone's heart and their soul and they're wondering what should I do father would you help them to be able to step out in faith and say I want to confess him before man so bless us father during this time of invitation and I ask it in Jesus name amen please stand as we sing trusting Jesus
thank you for paying attention to me and for putting up with me. You know, God blesses us in so many different ways, and He's wanting to bless you this coming year. Y'all have a happy new year. And I want to thank Kelly again for coming and for ministering to us. It's been good to have him. I look forward to when, the, when he can bring the whole group and, uh, and they can do a concert for us. So uh, all those things are in our future. They're going to happen. Uh, you know, if, if God says to let it happen. So I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for coming out. Y'all have a happy new year. Let's ask God to bless us as we leave this place. Father, we're just so thankful for your love. We're so thankful to be blessed by you in so many different ways. Would you go with us now as, uh, as we go back to our homes or go out to dinner or go to our families' uh, homes or wherever it is that we're going, would you keep us safe? And, and Father, I'd pray for our pastor. He's away, and, uh, and we miss him, and uh, he's just so dear to us, and I pray that you'd be in the midst of everything that he does and keep him safe, bring him back to us just as quickly as you can. And we'll give you all the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join us in the family of God. I'm so glad I'm, I'm a part of the family of God. I've been born.